Alrighty, hello everyone, good morning, afternoon, or whatever may happen to be in your neck of the woods, and welcome to the review here. So, um, just finished my first campaign of this one. Um, gotta say, love the hell out of this mod. There were a few kind of gripey moments, we'll get to that in a minute, but hot dang, this, this mod is amazing. Like, okay, so first question that always comes up, what exactly does X Division do, especially compared with, uh, with Xenonauts? Um, basically, if you've heard of Long War, if you've heard of XCOM Files, you know, Terrifying World of Silence, all that kind of thing, um, it's basically that for Xenonauts. But here's the thing. Uh, one of the things that uh, Xenonauts actually carried over from the original XCOM, the kind of, I mean, it, it personally, you know, it, it, I kind of thought it could have gone either way, but um, they kind of got people the wrong way was they removed some of the logistics and then they made a lot of, uh, a, a lot of the things kind of insta-kills as the game went on. The thing is, though, like, it, it makes more sense in context, let me put it that way. Like, for example, if somebody is hit with, like, a pistol or a rifle or something like that, more than likely, they will survive it. If they're hit with a cannon, they're gone. Like, it's it's that kind of thing. So, uh, so anyways, uh, essentially, as, as you go throughout the game, you know, your basic armors could improve the odds of somebody surviving. By the time it gets to the very end, you know, you could straight up just ignore a couple of shots, but you were still eventually going down. So... Essentially, what this mod does, uh, it does a ton. Let me let me say that right off the bat. If you've played vanilla Xenonauts, you know how the how scary the Androns were when they first showed up, and you would just shoot them with a burst, and it's like, oh crap, that thing ate my bullets. That is how good your armor gets in the early game. Um, as far as um, as far as weapons and stuff, the options are insane. As far as your uh, your vehicle options, they're all over the place. Again, we're covering that in a moment. But essentially, it takes everything that was there and expands it. So, fully functional uh, armor system that you actually get a lot of uh, interesting use out of. If we want to go over here, it's like for example, you remember the like four armors in the original? Well, you got <laughs> they're still technically here. There's a whole bunch of new ones now, and actually, all of them have updated visuals and stuff like that as well. Personally, I always uh, always like the uh, the wolf armor here. Uh, but basically, this is this is kind of how it all comes together. Everything's expanded. There's like a thousand researches, I think. Uh, Vehicle-wise, there's an absolute ton. Um, as far as the research, actually, fun note on that. This mod is one of those ones that's kind of infinitely replayable in that way, uh, because it kind of has a soft randomizer in place. Um, the best way I can describe it is that every research type has kind of a, a chance for related things to cause an inspiration towards other things. So, like, for example, say... Say there's like five variants of a certain you know weapon type that suddenly starts showing up and you're capturing them, and every single one of them like let's say will have an, an increasing chance to unlock a certain technology with it, and getting all of them will get an, an advanced version of that, or you know maybe getting certain like let's say xenomorphs uh, unlock uh, unlock a lot of melee options, but which ones you actually need is going to vary by campaign. <clears throat> So it's kind of uh, kind of interesting because the unknown aspect is really emphasized here. That you're really uh, you're really kind of uh, pushed towards uh, towards capturing everything you see. Um, it's 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 really good. Let me let me put it that way. Um, I have <laughs> I have never uh, I will say I never had more of a uh, more of a consistent feeling like you know that awesome moment in XCOM where it's like okay I don't know what's coming. I know roughly what to do. There's this whole fight going on, but I'm not quite sure where to go. That is this this mod like from start to finish, because there will always be another like another step, another you know another thing to capture, another technology that might help you out, and you can pursue the right direction, but what where exactly that direction goes is going to be different every time. It's so, like for example in my first campaign, for the life of me, I couldn't find where the power armor was. Apparently. Um, uh, apparently, I actually might have just repeatedly vaporized the enemy I needed, but either way, um, I, I started running into uh, into issues and kind of eventually ran into this quagmire where essentially I just had endless rookies and fortresses all over the place and just sending rookies with <laughs> grenades and shields in there. Um, meanwhile, on the second campaign, I ended up picking up some of that stuff early, ended up having a shortage of my like later game weapons, had a whole bunch of fancy jets, but I didn't have the parts to get them. There's basically moving parts all over the place. That's the best way I can put it. I'm sorry for not being more detailed on that, but there's so, so many moving parts to this mod that it is, it's legitimately meant to be played in a state of confusion. 
Um, I've heard the, well, that is to say, I've heard the devs actually mention several times that they're like, okay, keep a spreadsheet or something like that on hand. <laughs> you know, we'll, uh, it's, it's a good idea to, to keep track of what you've captured and what you haven't. I played this, uh, this mod through like a complete moron on an Iron Man run, and, uh, yeah, I did run into a few hiccups, but hot dang, it, it was, it was one hell of a ride, I'll tell you that much. Um, so similarly to Long War, it's a fairly long campaign. I would say expect two to four months out of save file if you're going uh, going smoothly. For me, due to hiatuses and due to a few parts where I just kind of fumbled through stuff, it took about a year. Um, again, that's unexpected. Bear in mind, several months of that were just uh, taken off. Um, I've noticed a lot of folks that go to show this uh, show this mod off do end up uh, taking a little bit of time. Because it's really one of those ones that's better, that's better played off stream, to be totally honest. Um, but yeah, you've got options out the wazoo. That's the, the biggest feature of this mod. So as far as your armors go, you've essentially got several, three different classes of armors. Just to kind of cover that real quick. You've got your basic soldier ones that make you shoot real accurately. All your shots take less TUs to use. They've got a smaller TU pool as a result. They aren't as resistant to as many things, but it basically creates situations where... If that's useful, it can be particularly handy. Like, I personally found a really cheesy thing that you could do early on, where you could go and unlock, like, let's say, axes and all that kind of thing. Got a good amount of armor mitigation on them. You have somebody running out with a shield and, like, basic soldier armor. Uh, who do I have? And some of that stuff. Yeah, bear in mind, despite the fact that I've got so many people running this, this was a circumstance of the run. Personally, I kind of preferred the soldier armor for most for uh, for uh, its overall uh, usefulness here. Either way, your run will kind of evolve based on what you get and what you can get a hold of and what units you can actually capture because they will fight back in this one. Um, but like, for example, I had that cheesy strategy where I would just have people running in with shields and uh, and like axes and just hanging off their belt, just go and give them like a, a medium or heavy shield here, and uh, they would just run soaking up bullets uh, with that shield running, getting close, spending their entire turns wailing with an axe. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Which, actually, speaking of, uh, speaking of that note, uh, the shields in this one, uh, if you've played Vanilla Xenonauts, they are, generally speaking, about 50 to 100% improved in terms of their durability. Um, the Assault Shield in particular, I believe this was like 150, 160, something like that in Vanilla, now it's 450. This thing can legitimately tank cannon rounds, <laughs> like, it's pretty great. Um, so yeah. You're constantly adapting based off what kind of researches you get, based off what kind of aliens you find laying around, and all of that essentially feeds into the manufacturing system here. So every time that you capture a unit or you kill a unit or, or whatever else, you end up uh, going and getting materials off of them. Also, wait a minute, have I seriously... I was lacking for dense fibers later on in this run, and I apparently had like 200 of them like just laying around here. Anyway, um, <laughs> that's neither here nor there, but... Point being, you're going and you're more or less monster huntering your uh, your random uh, things that you fight or capture. Uh, their weapons are essentially ripped apart. Like if you go over here, they're ripped apart into cores, which are then essentially repurposed into your own weapons. Um, all the weapon classes, these, despite the fact that they're saying like Mark One, Mark Two, with whatever else, these all go in wildly different directions. Um, personally, I loved this. Because you have the stuff that you originally start with here, and then it just evolves. It makes a logical evolution as stuff goes on. It's like, let's say, the division tree here you end up getting pretty early on. It's like, okay, we you know, we studied the alien version of this. We can make stronger, you know, ballistic-type weapons, and you start seeing that uh, the locals are going in and uh, picking up some of these. Um, which, by the way, eight tiers of different, or eight different sets of weapons, and you do see the locals actually using them. Actually, speaking of, you end up seeing about four times as many uh, groups of locals as you did in the original game, so it's pretty cool that you show up to an army base and there's a bunch of army dudes all over the place actually already participating in the fight. That part is just... it's really, really cool. Again, even XCOM 2 did not do that as well as XDiv does. It's it's fantastic. Um, they The AI is actually surprisingly good, so they will legitimately do their job. Uh, they'll go and they'll get civilians into buildings and they'll sit there guarding the door and they'll have an, you know, a heavy machine gun guy in the window and they'll have shotguns by the door. It's, I don't know if that's circumstantial or what. I don't know how advanced it is exactly, but the AI does seem to do its job very well. But anyway, so you start seeing them showing up with all this kind of stuff. 
And then they're like, okay, you know, we, we have some other stuff that we developed as well, like a cannon. This wasn't in the original game, what's that about? It's like, okay, it's got like a, a burst mode on there, so functionally speaking, this thing turns into this... Uh, if you've played the original XCOM, it's essentially the auto cannon with explosive rounds. And then you just basically get different evolutions as stuff goes on, the price increases. If you feel like paying that price, you get some amazing stuff. Like, for example, this was available at the very start of the game. It was still useful all the way to the end. Um, like I said, very long campaign, very wide varieties of uh, damage that are available. Different stuff is useful at different times. It's very much a mod about adapting to your situation. Early on, for example, I could get away with, you know, giving somebody a shield, some, some okay armor. You know, having them sit behind a car with a heavy machine gun or something like that, suppressing everything. As time went on, they became less scared of ballistic stuff, because they knew that their armor could take it, so it doesn't scare them as often, it doesn't suppress them as well. So you end up needing like laser miniguns, which may not necessarily rip apart their uh, rip apart their health as well, but they know that they've got a weakness to energy, so it's going to suppress them more. Um, it's just, it's really cool. It's really cool to just go through and learn all these different weaknesses and strengths of all these different kinds of units. Um, I should mention about the armor system actually while we're here. Um, everything eventually wears down. And this, it, it does mention all of this in tooltips, by the way, as well as uh, if you want to go up here and read through all this stuff. I should mention yet again, I ha I didn't unlock everything in this in this particular campaign. There's a hell of a lot of stuff to unlock. So, uh, so yeah, um, don't even don't even take this as everything because it's really really not. Um, but there's a lot of cool stuff that you can learn just kind of going through all of this stuff. Um, I will say actually the end game is a little bit different as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, anyhow, so as far as the armor system goes, yes, everything wears down. Um, I actually have a video, which I'll hopefully remember to link to this one, uh, called All That Is Man, in which, yeah, an arm, a, a like full straight-up uh, Goliath tank out of Command & Conquer was one of the enemy units. Yes, we'll get to that little tidbit in a minute. Um, and, and yeah, eventually they shot the thing enough times that the guy was able to take it out with a pistol because all armor shreds. Well, actually, to some degree. Ballistic and energy stuff will get shredded every time it's hit by either type of damage. This does not mean, like, for example, somebody gets hit by lasers, their ballistic defense also goes down. It's just like both scores get shredded down as they take hits. Now, it's a third of the damage dealt. The way that I understand it is if it manages to punch through, it will take a third of that particular damage. If it doesn't punch through, it takes off one armor, I believe. Because there's a lot of cases later on in the game where they've got like 200 armor and they will survive a couple minigun bursts before they, uh, before they actually end up taking significant damage. To compensate for the fact that armor gets pretty high as the game goes on, you'll notice there's several cases where they have a score called Mitigation on the weapons, um, which is exactly what it sounds like. Also, Sonic is the worst possible thing I could show you for that because it does not mitigate. Um, also, same thing for Pulse Mark 1. Let's go over ahead and go over to the Ballistic ones. So, like, Ballistic stuff will, generally speaking, have a lot better mitigation. Like, this thing ignores 70 armor, which is going to be almost enough to consistently do, do damage against anything. Like, as far as going over different roles, I mean, you've got HMGs for basically firing in different, uh, firing suppressing shots in different directions, or doing a lot of damage in different directions. You've got mini guns for, like, okay, you've got somebody in a tank suit, and they just run up and shred something at close range, or you suppress something at long range. Snipers are pretty obvious, pistols are pretty obvious. Actually, one thing that bugged me more than it should is going down to the mag tree here, that the, uh, the mag pistols come with a burst shot ability. And I can't use that on the suit that looks like RoboCop. So as over, as over here, I was putting this guy together. I was like, man, I'm going to go and give him the Mag 3. And then I couldn't figure out why I couldn't put it on him. It's like, oh yeah, I forgot that <laughs> I forgot that the heavy suits actually don't let you use uh, small guns on them. I mean, to be fair, it's more of a flavor thing. Um, it, realistically, there's no reason why you wouldn't want to give them a minigun <laughs> or a flamethrower or something like that. But, uh, but yeah. They're limited to, to heavy machine guns, miniguns, flamethrowers, anything classed as a heavy weapon. Uh, but yeah, so this is like, you can kind of get a general idea here. There's a ton of equipment of, of any kind. If you want to go melee, you got that. If you want to go like freaking planting this kind of stuff all over the place, yes, there is a sp specific anti-robot charge to clear an entire UFO. Like as time goes on, you get specialized stuff out the wazoo. It's amazing. If you like uh, if you like your rocketeer builds, like I personally do, 
you got you got plenty of those. Um, and bear, bear in mind, this actually does bring back one of the things from the original XCOMs, which is manufacturing those rockets, uh, manufacturing a lot of your equipment. You got to constantly keep up with that resource flow. Um, there are, I will mention this just as kind of an offhand thing. Yes, you can accidentally manu you can accidentally dupe things. In certain circumstances, there's two particular things that come to mind. I won't say how. Um, just bear in mind if you run into that bug. It is only two things that are, realistically, only two categories that are affected. It's not actually extensively abusable. Um, at least I don't personally think it is. So don't take it as a, I guess, more significant hole is the best way to put it. I know the first time I ran into that, I was like, oh man, this is pretty busted. But yeah, then yeah, in the long run, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Um, it's just, yeah, you might do it on accident. Don't worry about it. It's not the end of the world. Um, it doesn't really affect the flow of the game in any particular manner. Actually, I guess technically three categories, but one of those was already in the vanilla game, and it was an engine thing that they actually couldn't fix. And it's so oddly specific that I don't think anyone will realistically run into it on a normal run, but oh well. Anywho, moving on here. The, the music in the background may clue you into something awesome going on with this one, which is the sheer unmitigated sexiness of the air game in this mod. So anyone that's played Xenonauts before knows how much better the air game is from basically all the XCOM games. It's not even a question. There's actually a fully functional air game here. Um, in fact, if I let it sit here a moment, we can go show off one of those. Um, I should mention, if if the air game isn't quite your thing, and also I should mention... Actually, wait a minute. Before I do that, a quick little disclaimer. You are about to see an absolute just F-load of UFOs everywhere. This is a matter of how this run became. <laughs> Don't, this is not normal, just so you know. <laughs> this is not in any way normal. Um, I kind of, like, at the very end, you have this moment where you have to hold off for quite a while, and then I was like, well, technically speaking, I don't really have to do that, so I can just let them plant fortresses for, like, a month. <laughs> so, yeah, d don't expect this to be normal. Um, and yeah, they'll, like, they'll, the more, uh, bases and, uh, fortresses and stuff like that they put down, the more, uh, the more ships they'll actually send out. So realistically, you're seeing, like, give or take, uh, I, I would say the, the more normal thing here would be maybe waves of five or six, uh, spawns of UFOs. So, like, for, for example, for the air game here, you've got all kinds of different, uh, different loadouts for all your ships as you want. Uh, fun note that nobody actually told me until I was a good bit into it. You actually have hotkeys for this one. Q and E for roll, F4 to select all, A for afterburners. That's just basically this whole dealie here. That's that one. Just something to note. Uh, the whole Q and E thing becomes important because you can basically roll all your ships and be like, Oh, look, do all this fancy stuff. Except, right, the Sonda... Neither the Sonda nor the Lotus here actually flip, so that was a... A bit of a stupid move, actually. I should not have sent these against this one at all. That's perfectly fine. These are probably going to die here. Um, <laughs> that's fine. Um, so yeah, all of the ships are going to have different roles. Like, for example, the one that got shot down is essentially a small missile spammer. This one is a kind of a special variant. You actually get a few special jets based off uh, different stuff that you can do. Um, like, for example, this one came from a Phase 2 battleship. Um, just basically capturing a couple of them. The first one for research, the second one for actually collecting the core of it to transform into one of those. Like, I personally really, really love the mines, because even if they don't, you know, they don't end up all uh, connecting, you st still can get a win off it. And, uh, yeah, one thing you may notice here is that this, well, I'll show you right now. Let's see, this one, you may notice they're at 0% health, but they're being retrieved. This is something... That original Xenonauts did. Um, it's a bit more extensive in this one because you have to spend, like in this case, it's 101 hours. I believe it was, it was about 48 hours in the original game. Um, this will vary based on how much jet, uh, how much health the uh, jets had, I believe. Um, but either way, you've got tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of options, just like everything else. Like for example, if I go down to the cannons here, I I barely invested into cannons, and I've already got plenty here. Go to missiles. Go to the heavy missiles. I mean it literally goes off the screen with your options. It's crazy how much stuff you get in this. Um, uh, what else? Yes, you do get mechs. Uh, this is something that really surprised me. Um, I will say it's one of those things that, yes, it, it 
it's difficult to get a hold of. It's not the enemy unit that you're going to think you get it from. At least, more than likely, I think. Actually, no. From what I understand, the one unit that, uh, that I thought was going to unlock mechs is one of the ones that I still haven't captured in this particular campaign. Um, actually, quick little note for those uh, so no one else does the mistake I did. Don't try to capture robots. Those are all the androns, all the mechs, all the tanks, all that kind of thing. Stun damage does not work on them in any capacity. EMP stuff works as far as regular damage goes. It doesn't. There is no capturing them. You basically just put back together the wreckage. Don't worry about that. Um, and also, another thing I should probably warn, the flamethrowers are awesome. Don't overuse them. <laughs> because you end up losing out on materials. It's kind of cool because the, you uh, throughout most of the game you have an option that you unlock relatively early. You have two options, in fact. Um, you have your uh, your standard rockets that tend to get updated way earlier than they did in the uh, vanilla Xenonauts game. Uh, so, for example, like HE Plasma here, I got back in Phase 2. And that will essentially vaporize almost anything that you hit with it. Whereas in vanilla, you kind of had to be one tier ahead for that to happen. It was mostly a very severely wound kind of thing. Um, you could argue the balance one way or another. You had less stuff fighting in that one. It made more sense. Anyhow, that's neither here nor there, though. So you usually get that option as well as flamethrowers relatively early on. Um, a lot of stuff is weak to incendiary damage. However, you don't get any of their weapon parts. You don't get any, any of, of the materials if they get vaporized. Um, it's just one of those things where you kind of want to use them sparingly, if at all possible. It's kind of an interesting part of the balance of this game, in fact. And yeah, if you want to use all kinds of different grenades and all that kind of thing, that's available as well. Uh, fun little note on the balance for these ones, by the way. Gas is another one of the chemical types, that, or another one of the damage types that a lot of things are technically weak to. Um, and you kind of have the option of the stun ones, which you basically have to capture stun grenades to repurpose for your own stun grenades. Or you've got a chemical option, which is technically easier to get to and technically does more damage. However, you can't actually capture them alive from it. Kind of an interesting little trade-off as far as that goes. And then you've got varying intensities of your flashbangs and everything else, like you've got your extreme flash grenades here. They will suppress something with the about about the equivalent of taking a minigun to the chin. Um, but yeah, they'll take an alloy to put together. Um, I will say um, I found the end game alloy balance to be super janky. Here's the thing, though. Apparently that's been addressed in a recent patch. Um, I actually have not played that recent patch yet. Um, and I still was able to make it through the campaign just fine. I just didn't end up getting to use a lot of those endgame toys. Um, on top of that, apparently a lot of the grenades got upgraded. So either way, all of that uh, is theoretically improved by now, so I wouldn't take that as the exact uh, exact truth there. Um, additionally, each of these weapon tiers, while they seem like they'd be a flat upgrade in terms of like you get you start up with your, with your division and laser, then you go to mag and plasma, then you go to rail, or you go to Gauss and pulse, and then rail and sonic. Um, they're not, like, hard upgrades. Like, for example, uh, Mag was one of the earlier ones that we ended up picking up super early on. But this thing here, when, like, it fires 80 times. It was useful all game. Um, this thing back here, back, uh, you know, unlocked in Phase 1. I'll explain the phases more in a little bit. This was still useful all game. This was still useful for a really, for a really long part of it. I mean, hell, I think, let's see, 22, 22 kinetic, 8 mitigation, 80 shots. Whereas this one is, let's see, yeah, it's like, it's slightly more mitigation, but all things, it's slightly more mitigation, slightly worse accuracy, all things considered, I probably should have been using the Division 1 over that now that I'm looking at it. I didn't even realize that I unlocked the Division 3. Um, but yeah, so like, those, those are the kinds of options, like, you can see there's little tweaks between each of the, uh, each of the things here, and they make them perform vastly differently. And in a lot of cases, you may not necessarily like see exactly what what the difference is like let's say something like the plasma cannon here potentially does ridiculous amounts of damage but it can't get past armor worth of crap for the most part but still when it was used for a while i found a lot of use in this one by essentially just having two characters running around with, with like shotguns and things like that they pop something shred down its armor to some degree suddenly this thing runs up and has an almost guaranteed chance to finish him off so Putting together these little different combinations, all these different items, is really, really, uh, really, really fun to mess with. I mean, later on, you got like shotgun pistols and stuff like that. You got your lightning guns against robots. And 
what am I even saying here? You got options out the wazoo. You can see this. Like this is this isn't even everything. Is the is the thing. There's so much crap everywhere. Um, and you unlock it in parts. So like let's say you capture all the all the ballistic versions of weapons. It's like okay, I can now make the you know the the, the the tier one versions of all this stuff, but only some of the weapons. And then you you un you find all the rest of those lying around. It's like okay, now I can make all the weapons of that particular thing. Like okay, look, I found this weapon surgeon guy. He can teach how to make how to make the uh, you know the uh, tier two version of it. But those ones are going to cost more to make. They're going to take a different alloy load. To put. Like suddenly they're going to take cores instead of just alloys. Uh, typically the pattern is the first ones take alloys, then they take cores, and then they take millennium plus cores plus alloys. Um, so if you end up losing some of those expensive weapons, it can hit you really hard. <sighs> okay, so gotten all that stuff out of the way. I think you get the general idea there. Air game's super fun. Uh, the, uh, the UFO variety is actually pretty severely upped from the way it was in the vanilla game. Um, you're going to be seeing way more uh, way more variety in terms of the fights you run into, I feel, in this one than many others. Even if technically there's fewer mission types than something like, let's say, you know, XCOM files or whatever else, I found more variety in the fights in this one. Um, so, again, it varies. Everything's going to gonna vary all over the place. Uh, one little side note I should mention about the different dropships. Uh, there's a bunch of different ones. I should mention that for folks that play the vanilla game, um, the Valkyrie actually functions differently in this one. Yes, you're still dropped down in air pods and stuff like that. Uh, however, this time around, you're actually basically just dropped in a giant shipping crate. So instead of being like, okay, you were dropped right in the open, instead you can open up all the doors and all the different sides. The entire thing is just a giant panel of doors, basically. Um, so that's pretty fun to mess with. Uh, it gives you a lot of potential entry options. I personally love this change. Um, I think it looks really cool. Um, but again, just kind of throw that out there. Oh, another thing actually on dropships, your vehicle slot is free. Um, that's one of the big changes from Xenonauts there, because before, uh, one vehicle took two soldier slots, and this one it takes no slots, so there's no reason to not bring along a vehicle at all times. Um, your Hunter Scout cars, which were previously, like, kind of, it, it was pretty expensive to actually use one of those in, in vanilla. Um, personally, I usually only ended up using them as kind of a long-range uh, artillery piece around month three or four or so. Um, uh, but yeah, in this one, you get them pretty early. They're only like five grand to manufacture. I guess they just they're just repurposing four horses or something. Um, and uh, and yeah, no, they're uh, they're pretty uh, pretty handy to have. Uh, sorry, trying to get over the manufacturing menu here. Yeah, and you get tons of different vehicle types. Again, this is not all of them. I practically tried to speedrun this game. Oh, they cost 10,000 in this patch, right? I think there were 5,000 in a previous patch. Still, though, if you're shooting down UFOs, you're getting funding. That's another another big difference from Xenonauts, um, or Xenonauts originally. Um, instead of dealing with a shoestring budget for the entire time, your budget is somewhat limited early on. You can lose that budget pretty easily. However, as time goes on, the more stuff you shoot down, the better your funding gets. There's no cap on your funding. Uh, so the better you do, you know, the better money you get. This was on standard new game. Uh, by the end of the campaign, I wound up with 127 mil in the bank, which is just ridiculous. Um, that's I've never I never even saw it reach like seven digits. <laughs> or okay, not seven digits. I never saw it uh, reach eight digits in the uh, in the original game, and here we are with that much. So um, I will say that this the way that they handled fortresses in this one is a little bit cheesable. But again, only in the end game, only if you've got the jets to actually support it. Um, I should mention, as far as options go, there are easy mode options for this one. So, for example, if if a unit uh, takes any kind of damage other than something that completely vaporizes them, they will survive. Um, by default, it is, I believe, negative 2% for each amount of health they went over their max health, or something along those lines. Um, uh, but yeah, in, in general, yeah, it... That one's there to make stuff easier, whether you want uh, face huggers and things like that to be insta-kills is up to you. Actually, I should probably mention that as well, but we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, as far as air game, uh, there's an easy air game and there's a no air game. Uh, if you get into a really bad fortress situation like I did, I would kind of advise just turning those on. Bear in mind, if you have two auto-resolves right next to each other, it will make the game crash. It wasn't meant to handle this kind of situation. Better solution is just not to get into this situation. <laughs> this is a total nightmarish fuzzer cluck that you never want to allow to happen. 
And yes, this is very much avoidable. I tried to pull off a speedrun strategy where I allowed a fortress to be built, which then led to another fortress, which led to four more, which just led to blah. So anyway, don't try to speedrun this particular mod. Let's put it that way. Uh, when when the enemies you need show up, they show up, and they'll show up sooner than you'd like. So that works out pretty well. As far as stats, you'll generally find that your units are actually able to reach their stat cap uh, as well. Uh, generally speaking, you're gaining more stats as stuff goes on. Um, oh yeah, so as far as enemy types, all of them function differently in this one. Um, I would say more of an extension of uh, how they were originally. So for example, Caesians originally were your kind of frail inf uh, infantry type of units that had psionic units with them. Um, in this one, they come in w uh, with shields, uh, so you basically have to either avoid or gun down their shields. I mention this because some people originally see that they'll like run up and shotgun a guy in the face and it's like they didn't do damage. It's like, no, they technically just don't have an animation for holding up a shield, so they have like little energy bucklers. The, the way that it's uh, the way that it's explained is like they have this little energy shield thing on their arm that projects a shield in front of them that doesn't look like anything. Which, okay, you know, they're from space. They got hyperdrives and crap. I'm sure they could pull it off. Um, but anyways, yeah, so it, it's basically like that. <clears throat> so pretty fantastic stuff there. Um, but yeah, you can just run around to the sides and just hit them from there. Uh, or you can do the old, uh, the old kind of ping pong trick, as a lot of people call it. You just basically have two guys with pistols and shields on either side of him, just popping him back and forth as he keeps turning around to go face him. Um, so yeah, uh, you've got a lot of different uh, unit types as well. Like the Caesians are now backed up by Xenomorphs uh, from the Alien franchise. That sounds weird at first, but it, it trust me, it what they do with it is pretty cool. Um, um, and then aside from that, they also have... Uh, what's it... Uh, oh yeah, so as far as the Androns, they end up getting tanks and mechs. There's one in... Oh god, there's one particular one. I don't really want to spoil it just because of how awesome it is when it first shows up. Let me just say that if you see one unit that is vastly out of place, out of nowhere, don't stand next to that thing. If it pretends to fall down, A, it's not dead. B, don't even be in the same building. I'm just going to leave it at that. It will just... Yeah, it, it, it will ruin you. Let, let, just leave it at that. It will completely ruin your day. Um, anyhow, aside from that, uh, what else do we got here? Uh, so we got uh, the civilians. Uh, they're the ones that actually will come in with uh, command and conquer tanks and stuff like that. Um, they will regenerate just like they did in the original game. And they're basically still running that same theme where they are pretty bulky. Uh, they can take a lot of hits. They can, uh, generally speaking, you're better off setting them on fire. Uh, they have that same limitation where I, I don't think the game quite explains everything, but it, they can see through smoke, but fire completely blinds them. It, technically. I mean, they, it basically functions like smoke would function for them. Setting them on fire kind of causes them to panic a little bit. This can vary, like mileage will vary, but it, it, especially early on, it's pretty uh, pretty handy to have there. And um, yeah, I think that more or less covers what's going on there. Uh, oh yeah, Terra missions! They can have all unit types, it's pretty cool. Like, you literally see every kind of unit show up at once. You see them all doing their different roles, you'll have your commander guy, you know, your, like, I, I think they call them uh, terror operators or whatever else, is like sitting there with some snipers on, a, on top of a skyscraper or something. Like popping down units, you'll have Heredians flying around, you'll have Androns walking through buildings. Oh, it's so cool! When like when this mod shines, it is hands down some of the coolest crap you'll see in the genre. It's uh, the fact that it takes a little bit of a minute to get there, you know, is its own thing. But anyhow, hopefully I did a at least somewhat decent job of explaining what it is that this mod even does. And um yeah, if you have any questions, if you want to see anything tested. If there's any kind of, I guess, reservations you have about this game in particular... Oh, wait. There's actually one question that I've seen come up a few times, which is, like, does the mod take itself too seriously? Um, no, not really. Um, it, like, it it tries to have jokes. It, like, it depends on your background culture, I guess. Like, okay. Okay. As a good, as a good idea of, like, does it take itself too seriously? There's a whole long-running joke of the direwolf armor being pink. Like, it's... <laughs> It tries. It tries to have little moments of levity here and there, just like the original did. 
for the most part, it's a pretty bleak setting. It's, an, I mean, it's an alien invasion in the middle of the Cold War. Stuff sucks. So, it tries not to take itself too seriously. It generally uh, kind of, uh, kind of lurks around the practicalities of both situations. Both sides and both the Earth and alien side will adapt their equipment to whatever's being built. Um, like I said, the tree is somewhat randomized, so you're gonna kind of, kind of work around the stuff that uh, that you can end up getting a hold of. Um, it. I guess it should probably be mentioned. As far as being worried about missing stuff, there's, I don't. I think at this point most of the missables have been sorted out, uh, simply because if you get a later version of something, it automatically gives you all the earlier versions. So either way, really, uh, really solid mod. I would highly recommend it. Honestly, even if you never finish the campaign, it's just it's a really interesting experience. Um, just yeah, r really worth a try. Um, if you're looking for Long War for Xenonauts, this is basically it. And then some. I personally would take this over Long War, and uh, that applies to all versions of that. Like I said, my favorite thing in the genre here, but anyway, like I said, if you have any other questions, let me know. Have yourself a good one, and take care.